Hello cuties, how are we doing? It is time for one of my big yearly TBRs I do every single year. The 25 books I have to read before I turn 25. Let's not talk about how whenever I do this video, every year I have an existential crisis about aging. Cause 25, it's sounding serious. It's sounding serious. I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. So I do a yearly TBR at the start of every year. So I did the 24 books I have to read in 2024. And then I do this one kind of midway or near the first half of the year of the 25 books I have to read before I turn 25, which is at the end of January next year. So it kind of is still a yearly TBR because I only have like a couple weeks at the start of next year to read these books. And this one, for some reason, is always the one I tend to do worse at, always. I, if I don't do well this year, we may have to sack it off <laughs> and just do the one yearly TBR. I love doing these. I love doing big year long TBRs. I would do one a, one a month if you let me. <laughs> like big, oh, these are the books I want to read before Christmas or whatever. I love doing it. I love how it makes me really kind of look ahead at the year and prioritize what books I want to read. But for some reason, the past couple years, I haven't done well at this one. But we're going to look forward to the rest of the year, the books I'm hoping to read. And I have split this into five categories of five books that kind of go across different reading goals or reading patterns that I have to try and get peak success <laughs> is what we're aiming for. But before we get into the books, which I'm, I'm looking at them all now, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely reading all of these. Absolutely no way I'm not reading any of them. <laughs> but before we get into the books, I wanna take a moment to talk to you guys about the sponsor of this video, which is something I'm using in my life to kind of look at, look who I want the rest of the year to look like. Not in my reading, but kind of in my lifestyle. So there's been a few times this year when I've been finding I've been struggling to keep a routine or introduce all of the things I want to do into my routine. But I find when I strip it back and just introduce a few simple tasks that are easy for me to do, I'm able to kind of habit stack and then slowly introduce more things and feel more productive and happy with the lifestyle that I'm living. And I find that meditation is one of the best simple tasks to introduce if you're looking to kind of habit stack because A, it takes almost no time at all. You can do it in five minutes, 10 minutes every day. And it drastically improves my mood and my emotional stability and thus I want to do it more. And thus I'm able to do more of the things I want to do more. So if like me, you want to start building the life you want to live, I challenge you to do a meditation challenge for 30 days like I am doing with Aura. I did one of these in April and I'm gonna start another one again soon because it went so well. And Aura is the meditation app that I love to use. They are sponsored today's video, but I absolutely love Aura. It's by far the best meditation app I've ever found and I've tried out a lot of them. <laughs> So Aura is a new meditation and sleep app with thousands of meditations, breath work, CBT. It has over 35,000 five-star reviews and hundreds of different coaches from incredibly diverse backgrounds. It has truly made such a big difference to me. Like I said, it's the best meditation app I've used. I love the personalization. With some meditation apps, I found there's only like one or two coaches. This has hundreds. And so you can really find people with styles of meditation that work for you. And and I truly cannot recommend it enough. You know, obviously I'm here to give you book recommendations, but I would also love to help you guys live happy and fulfilled and joyful lives. And I really find that that is what meditation does to me. I find that I become the person I want to be. It gives me, like I said, so much more emotional stability and makes me a better person to be around for my loved ones. So guys, come try it out. Come try out Aura if you haven't already. And do this 30 day challenge with me of trying to do meditation every single day. And like I said, some some days it might be two minutes, right? Some days it might be 15, but some days it might only be a few minutes, but it's it's the, the habit of building that every single day. So you can get started for completely free on Aura's website using my special link in the description. The first 500 people to click the link will get a free trial and 25% off membership when that free trial ends. So I think they're gonna go quickly. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the link below. Okie dokie, let's get into the book. So the first category I have is 2024 for releases. So this is books that are coming out the rest of this year. We've got five books. My five most anticipated ones have already come out or ones that haven't come out yet. I've got a few different ones. So let's get into it. The first book I want to talk about is not out yet. It's not out to like September, I think. But guys, We Self Murders by Richard Osman. There is not a world I am not reading We Self Murders. <laughs> 
by Rich Osmond. So this is Rich Osmond's new release. If you don't know, he is resting the Thursday Murder Club for a year and we are getting the start of a new series. I know. Oh my God, <laughs> my excitement can't be contained. This is a place for legends, okay? So this one, from what he's spoken about it, is a father-in-law and daughter-in-law duo who run like a detective agency and they go gallivanting around the world to solve these murders. I think it's gonna be a little bit different stylistically to Thursday Murder Club. Hopefully still a lot of his humour and heart to it but um I think you know it's gonna be, be a bit more jet setting also we haven't spoken about on the channel I realize I've never spoken to you guys about it the casting news for the Thursday Mayor Club movie I have to get myself onto that set somehow <laughs> Helen Mirren is playing Elizabeth Ben Kingsley is playing Ibrahim, but the, the, the shock, the shock is Pierce Brosnan playing Ron! I thought when they first got announced they weren't linked to specific characters and I thought for sure Pierce Brosnan was playing Stephen, but he's playing Ron? <laughs> okay, crazy. I can't quite see that, but listen, I love Richard Osman. This will probably be, I imagine, nominated in the Good Dreams Mystery Thriller. I feel like Richard Osman has secured his spot now with like always getting, he's been third or fourth the past couple of years with sequels. So this may be, guys, I just want you to say it with me, our best chance yet of getting Richard Osman to win the Good Dreams Mystery Thriller category because it's the first in the series. I feel like with sequels, there's less of a chance. I mean, granted, it, if Fred McFadden wins again, I may stop doing this video. <laughs> Reading the good trees for us to their category. Because I don't know if I can keep doing it. Also, we're going to have a Lucy Foley to be in contention with, which is always popular. But, like, if we can get We Self Murders to be... Oh, I'm so passionate about this. To be very successful. We may have a chance. We may have a chance. So, yes. That's our first one. Then we've got a few that I do own already. After We Self Murders, we're going to go for How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. This is a debut where this woman was told many years ago that she's going to be murdered. <laughs> and she spends her whole life making binders, folders, <laughs> of like tracking the people in her life and like how they might kill her or like why why people might kill her and then she is murdered in her old age and I think her great niece travels to um, her estate to her home and starts putting the puzzle pieces together I have heard good things when people have read this I can't believe I haven't read it yet some of my like new releases I'm feeling a little bit scared I've only read two 2024 releases so far and they were Bride and what's one I just read oh Warm Hands of Ghosts so those have been pretty successful so far but I have just got so many 2024 releases that I'm so excited to read that I'm kind of like intimidated <laughs> kind of scared. Another one I bought around a similar time and thus always kind of associate with it is Miss Austin Investigates by Jessica Bull. Again, oh my god guys, this is not the only Jane Austen related book. There's no Jane Austen books on this list. This is not the only Jane Austen related book that's gonna be on this list. This is called something different in the US. It's called like The Hapless Milliner and the series is called Miss Austen Investigates but our one is just called Miss Austen Investigates. I followed this author on Twitter for years. When the first announcement of this book when it had been bought by the publisher like in an auction, I followed this author ever since and I've been so excited. It's Jane Austen solving a murder mystery. It's my two worlds colliding. <laughs> I'm in my Jane Austen era as you guys know. I read Emma last year and Pride and Pictures this year, both five stars. I think Jane Austen was a genius <laughs> to walk this earth. I, I love her. She's a businesswoman, a TV star, a host, a producer, an actress, a philanthropist. She's one of the most influential, popular, wealthy women in the world. So I'm really excited for this one. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It is a debut, but I just think reading Jane Austen Solving Murder Mystery is going to be the most fun. So I'm very excited for this one. Then we have an arc that I very recently, very kindly received. This comes out in August here in the UK. I don't know if this is coming out this year in the US because all of Janice Hallett's books seem to come out like a year later, but surely they've got to fix that at some point. That can't keep happening, you know? <laughs> like surely that, I don't know if this is coming out in the US. Someone, if you're in the US, please check Barnes and Noble and let me know. Yeah, this is Janice Hallett's new release. I got the arc that I'm supposed to colour in, which is very exciting. And this one is six students, one murder. Your time starts now. Can you tell I'm very excited for all my murder mysteries? <laughs> I just love murder mysteries at the end of the day. Why are you going to have more murder mysteries coming up? Very, a lot of more murder mysteries. Anyways, moving on. Let me clarify something, baby girl. I'm not an influencer. I'm a brand. So we're following what happened on this multimedia art course with these different students. And it seems that one of them 
killed someone when the external examiner arrives to assess the student's essays and coursework he becomes convinced that a student was killed on the course and the others covered it up so we have all these different mixed media texts emails coursework that we have been given like we do with Janice Hallett and I'm just so because I ah, god I have so many book, good books to read isn't life incredible <laughs> Don't you just love reading books? I love reading books. I am really, 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 really excited for this one. And then the only other 2024 release I'm putting on this list is one that I'm gonna read, but I don't really know anything about it. It's Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune. Now this is a prequel, sequel? I'm not sure if it's a prequel or sequel to House on the Cerulean Sea. I have purposely not read the synopsis. Should I? I don't know if I want to know. Uh, let's look it up, I guess. I guess, like, it's my job. <laughs> I loved House of the Sea and far in the Lives of Puppets, I've loved every single TJ Klune I've read, apart from In the Lives of Puppets. Let's not talk about that. Okay, so we are following the house with the magical children and the characters. I don't want to give you too much of the synopsis because if you haven't read House of the Sea, it kind of is a spoiler. But the characters from House of the Sea and Arthur, who is the master of the orphanage, it calls him. He's like the head, he looks after the children. He is summoned to make a public statement about his dark past. He finds himself at the helm of a fight for the future that his family and all magical people deserve. I do feel a little bit burnt by TJ Klune after not having loved In Lives of Puppets, but I feel like back in this world and House of the Sea, but I feel like being back in the world of House of the Cerulean, I can't speak, but I feel like being back in the world of House of the Cerulean Sea, oh, it's like too many S's for my speech therapy child brain. <laughs> I, I feel like hopefully that magic will come back. So very excited for this one. Next category, everyone, is series progress. Books I'm gonna make progress in series by reading. I don't think any of these finish off a series, but I haven't got a ton of series at the moment where I've only got one book to read to finish off the series. So a lot of these are just me trying to make progress in series. One that I am incredibly, oh my God, I could read this right this second. I'm incredibly excited for is An Act of Foul Play by T. E. Kinsey. I very kindly got gifted this by my patron Cade, who has read a lot of the Lady Hardcastle mysteries on my recommendation. So I felt so lucky to receive it. We're in deep. At this point, you know, you guys know I love the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. It's number like eight, nine, seven, somewhere around that. And in this one, Lady Hardcastle is celebrating her birthday by seeing a play at the Duke's Theatre in Bristol with her maid and confidant, the imit- I can't say this word ever, inimitable. Flo, we love Flo. Act one is a triumph, then act two opens with a body on stage, a real one. One of the cast has been brutally murdered during the interval. Oh yeah. T.E. Kinsey is gonna absolutely slay with this one. I just know it. T.E. Kinsey, you're one of my favorite men. <laughs> Don't like a lot of men, but you know, well, which lost men, you know, but I do predominantly read women. Anyways, T.E. Kinsey, I love you. I love this series. It's my number one recommendation for Cozy Mysteries. I always say, just read the audiobooks, right? The audiobooks are incredible. The audiobook narrator is incredible. The life that she has put into Lady Hardcastle and Flo is amazing. I've honest, honestly, you guys, I feel like I have the best taste in music. Like, I think it's very hard to beat me in taste in music. Like, I just own them because I love them so dearly. But like, if you're a casual reader, I think you can just read the audiobooks. They're all on Everand. They should be pretty easy accessible. But yes, I'm very excited to read more Lady Hardcastle. I think I've only got three left to read, including the one that comes out this year, or maybe four, including the one that comes out this year. So I'm getting caught up. One day soon, I think I'm gonna be up to date with the Lady Hardcastle mystery series, which is a daunting prospect, not having one immediately to read. But then there is a side series, so it's fine. <laughs> then we have Escaping from Houdini by Kara Maniscalco. I've mentioned recently that I need to read this. I think I said Capturing the Devil, but that's the fourth one. This is the next one I have to read. I have the two left in the series, and this is the oldest series on my TBR. So like, you know, step it up, Megan. Like, let's get it read. We're following Audrey Rose Wadsworth and Thomas Cresswell. And in this one, I think they're going on a ship where there maybe is Houdini on there. <laughs> I don't know. This is set like in Victorian times and I do very much enjoy the setting. They're also slightly mixed media, I would say. Like before every chapter or most of the chapters, there's like a little bit of media that relates, like a photograph or something that relates to um, what's going on in the book. I've just found like the writing isn't the best I've ever read, you know? It's okay. I don't know if I'm, I don't want to pick up Kerry Maniscalco's current series, which is like The Kingdom of the Wicked. That one, I'm not interested in that. The writing's okay. I think the writing is what let it, lets it down. The plot, the setting is all very evocative, but I, there's just something about it that doesn't quite hit the spot. But I do want to finish the series because I have enjoyed them. Next we have The Brides of High 
Hi Hill by Nevo. I think this has only just come out or it's maybe not out for like a lot, another month or so in the UK. But this is the next in Singing Hill Cycle. I recently read the third and fourth kind of back to back um, and did enjoy them. And this is a series I love very much. And I always say this series is really a love letter to storytelling. We're following Cleric Chi as they go around and gather stories from people and kind of write down stories and record stories from people. And each book kind of tells how to tell stories in a different way. So yeah, I'd really love to get completely up to date with this series this year, um, because then it's another series I'm not currently reading. <laughs> And we've got to keep those stats in mind. Then we have The Shadow Cabinet by Gina Dawson. This is one I'm a little bit nervous for. In the first one, Her Majesty's Royal Coven, we're following these group of women who were friends growing up who were all witches and now they're kind of in different parts of the country practicing their witchiness in different ways. Some are in the government, some are kind of in the country living secret secretively and I don't want to say too much but like tensions escalate a lot in that book and then kind of come down and it ends on a cliffhanger that I'm terrified what well, is not a cliffhanger. Petrified. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Petrified. I'm terrified it's like a full stop. It's the kind of thing that happens where you're like, there has to be more to that. And if there's not more to that in this book, I'm gonna be incredibly, incredibly disappointed. I'm a little bit nervous about this one, about where it's gonna go. I think the first book is a very good self-contained book. And I'm just a bit nervous about what this book is gonna do. Does that make sense? But I am excited. I really, really did enjoy Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I think I gave it five stars. I thought it was wonderful. I would like for this one to get more into the governmental side because the idea of there being this secret witchy part of her of the government because that's what her majesty's royal coven is referring to like any other aspect of government like foreign affairs or home secretary or whatever there's there's a witchy part of it and i would love to get more into that side of it as someone who loves politics particularly british politics i'm very like plugged in on loves is the wrong word interested in <laughs> <laughs> don't love it. I, I would love it to get more into that side of it. So we shall see. I have been chatting for so long. We need to speed this up. I, I'm so excited about all these books. I could speak for 10 years. Hurry up, girls. We have business to do. And then the final one we have is Us Against You by Frederick Backman. This is the sequel to Bear Town, which I really, really did enjoy. In the first one, there's an event that kind of splits the town in two and leaves people on opposing sides. And after that, I'm it kind of felt like a standalone again to me. I'm kind of like, where is this book going to go? But apparently we're following Bear Town and Head, which is a rival town, particularly on the hockey field, they're rivals. There's a big game and by the game's end, someone from Bear Town will be dead. So Frederick Beckman's writing is very beautiful. It's very heartfelt. It's very emotional. So I'm excited to read this and see where the series is going to go. Then when I said I was doing this video on my patron, one of my patrons, I think it was Clara, suggested, why don't you include some of the books that came from your last birthday haul. So I do a haul every year of any books that my family sent me or you guys may send me on my birthday. I unbox and unwrap them all. And um, yeah, Clara suggested, why don't you select some of the books that are in that haul? So that's what I've done. I've read quite a few of them actually already. I think there was only like seven to choose from. So I've picked five of them. Like I said, Miss Austin Investigates wasn't the only <laughs> Jane Austen related book on this list. I have picked Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. This is nonfiction all about Jane Austen. Now I have been informed, Lucy Lucy Worsley's non-fictions. She has two of these about female authors and like some of my favorite female authors. I own this one and I own her Agatha Christie one. Both seem to be quite spoilery for their books. And Do you want spoilers? And I don't mind that so much with Jane Austen. A, I've read more of her oeuvre. <laughs> like she has a much smaller book collection, Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie is gonna take me my entire life to get through. And B, I feel like knowing like, oh, they fall in love. <laughs> like isn't exactly a spoiler for Jane Austen. Or as knowing who done it, is more of a spoiler of Agatha Christie. So I've put the Agatha Christie one on hold. I'm not really expecting to read that anytime soon, but I do think I can get into this Jane Austen one. And I watched recently a documentary that Lucy Worsley did on Jane Austen and I loved it. So I imagine this will just be a more detailed version of that. It says, this new telling of the story of Jane's life shows us how and why she lived as she did, examining the places and spaces that mattered to her. It wasn't all country houses and ballrooms, but a life that was often a painful struggle. So I'm very excited to read this. 
this. I love anything Jane Austen related at the moment. I need to read my last Jane Austen's, but I don't want to rush them though. I don't want to rush reading like, what ones have I got left? I've got Sense and Sensibility, Mansfield Park, Nathanga Abbey, and then I read Persuasion a while ago, but I would like to reread that. And then we've got Sandy Ten, and then we've got like, you know, her younger writings, which I probably will read one day. But I don't, yeah, I don't want to run a rush into reading them, but I feel like the spoilers in this won't be as damaging as the spoilers in the Agatha Christie one. Then we have got Rouge by Mona Awad. This is a horror to do with beauty and skincare. I believe our protagonist's mother dies and uh, that kind of sends it off into a spiral. This is one I've purposely not tried to find too much about the plot out. I do want it to be a surprise. This is a brilliant biting critique of Western beauty standards. Very exciting. I recently read Natural Beauty for my patron book club and I thought it was okay, but I felt like it was like, oh, I'm a critique of the beauty standards and it didn't really get into the meat of it. Like I want us, it felt like surface level critiques. It felt also like the, um, situation that was being described was too outlandish that thus it wasn't really critiquing anything. So I've often heard those two compared so I'm hoping that this one will get more into the nitty gritty that I really want from a horror that's promising this kind of thing. Next we have Butts, a backstory. This is non-fiction about butts. I'm sorry. <laughs> so excited to read this book. I'm so excited to read this book. It's based about the history of, of the butt and its cultural relevance and it's the attitude towards big butts. I said this when I hold it, there's no way to say this, but like my... <laughs> stop while you're, stop while you're ahead. My, I've got quite a large bum and it has been a big part of my identity throughout my life. <laughs> um... So it's something I'm very passionate about. <laughs> I'm being deadly serious, by the way. I'm not joking. I'm so excited to read this. I'm so excited to read this. Also, I loved how this came second in the category I was nominated for for Goodreads Choice Awards, which was how I was introduced to it, which was a positive. And it got like triple the amount of votes and it had ratings because we all just love the cover. <laughs> I, I'm very, very excited for this one. I think it's gonna be fascinating. And this is more of the non-fiction I really wanna get round to. I haven't put a ton of non-fiction on this list because whenever I try to do that, I fail. There's a fair amount on my 2024 TBR. But um, this is more of the non-fiction I wanna read where it really dives into a topic that I'm interested in, sorry. But um, in an informative and imaginative and cool way, you know? So very excited. Then the next two were kind of ones I was forced to put on here because of this category. But I think this is an important category to have. But I kind of wasn't like, I don't know, I wouldn't have probably put these on here otherwise, but I do think I'm pretty likely to get to them both. So first we've got Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I've read a lot of Silvia Moreno-Garcia, so I have read her three most recent releases. Mexican Gothic, Velvet Was the Night, The Daughter Dr. Moreau. I loved Mexican Gothic, I didn't like the other two. Nowadays I'm starting to think that maybe some of her older stuff, like The Beautiful Ones, Gods of Jade and Shadow might be more successful for me, but I do read a lot of Silver Moreno Garcia, so <laughs> even though I haven't loved a lot of the newer ones. But this one is set in Mexico City in the film industry in the 90s, and I think there's like a cursed film, a magic film that was never finished, and they're trying to put the missing scenes together and refilm parts of it, but there's a curse towards it. I am interested in it. I've just been burned a little bit by Sylvia, right? I've been burned. 2024 really sounds fascinating as well. I'll put a picture of it here. Don't you just love the cover? She just pulled me in. I always say her synopses are one of the ones that get me. I just have to get them, you know? I just have to get them. So I shall continue reading Silver Moreno Garcia forever, regardless of whether I'm actually enjoying them or not, it seems. And then finally, we have got The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. This is one that so many people have recommended to me. There's just a little synopsis here, so I'll read it out to you. Evar has lived his whole life trapped within a vast library, older than empires and larger than cities. Leveria has spent hers in a tiny settlement out on the dust where no one goes and nightmares stalk. The world has never noticed them. That's about to change. So I don't really know much about this. Also on the back, there's just a very brief synopsis. Again, we'll read it together. All books, no matter their binding, will fall to dust. The stories they carry may last longer. They might outlive the paper, the library, even the language in which they were first written. The greatest story can reach the stars. So like, God knows what this book is about. It's like chunky and it's not given me a lot. <laughs> it's a bit of a mystery. But so many people of my patrons have read this and told me I'm going to enjoy it. So I'm kind of going in blind, but I am excited. There's something about this and the cover and how grand it feels. You guys know I love a grand book. It doesn't have to be a long book. 
but a grand book, you know? Like I said, Warm Hands of Ghost is that, Babel is that. These books that have a certain, like, swagger to them, you know what I mean? <laughs> a certain power to them. This feels like that. So I'm I'm very intrigued to see what this is gonna be like. Next category is murder mysteries. Listen, there is a bit of crossover with these categories. <laughs> We've had quite a few murder mysteries on this list already, but this is more murder mysteries I wanna read because I love murder mysteries. Let's go. First we have, actually I don't know if this is technically a murder mystery, but it's definitely playing on the idea of murder mysteries. Often I include in this either murder mysteries or things that play on the tropes. We have The McMaster's Guide to Homicide, Murder Your Employer. This is one I recently hauled. I have wanted this for so long and almost hauled it so many times. I actually did have an order of the hardcover of this for months and Amazon was like, it ain't happening babes and refunded me. <laughs> and then I brought the paper back like last week. This is about the McMaster's Conservatory. Future deletists learn the consummate execution of the homicidal arts and I think they have to like plan the perfect murder uh, as part of their, their job. I have heard really, really good things about this one. Also, I just love the vibe of it. I love the cover of both the hardcover and this paperback I think is really cool. It's like vintagey. I always say one of my favorite things is anything that really plays on the tropes of the murder mystery genre. So I am so excited. The font is like aggressively small though, which I don't love. I am having a wonderful feeling about this. I think it could be fascinating. I've also heard it's very funny. Is this the one that's written by the guy who wrote the Pina Colada song? feel like pina coladas. I think he wrote it. I think he sang it. I think this is the same guy. So, crossing of worlds there, but <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. Then we've got one that's on TBR Cluedo. Every month so far this year, there's been one book per month I have not read for TBR Cluedo yet. So, excellent. I'm keeping track of them and I shall read them whenever there's a video that allows me to read them. So, we have got Helly and Death by Oscar Jensen. This was in February's TBR Cluedo, I believe. I am still so excited for this. I'm going to end up reading this in the height of summer and it's set during a snowstorm. But sometimes I enjoy that. I think it's so fun when a book is very set in a, in a season to either read it in that season or read it in the opposite season. Like I remember I read um, The Writing Retreat like in the garden when it was hot and that's like a cold snowy book. I think it's sometimes fun to like really immerse yourself in the opposite world. So anyways, this is Scandy Cozy, you know, tribute to Agatha Christie, traditional whodunit. Oh my God, I'm so excited. We've got this art historian who invites people to his home and there's shocking revelations at the dinner table and it's followed by an apparent suicide, but it's probably a murder, let's be honest. And there's a, there's a floor plan right at the front. Oh, I think I'm gonna love this. I think it's gonna be absolutely wonderful. And I think quite a few have told me that you've read this and enjoyed it. Oh, Danish glossary at the start. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> how exciting. I'm really excited to read this. I, it's been on TV Cluedo for ages and I need to just get to it. Then one I don't actually own yet, which is always risky putting it on a yearly TV where you don't own it, but I do, I have to get my hands on this soon, is my next pro row to read. So technically my next pro row to read is I do want to do a reread of Murder on the Orient Express, which is the first Agatha Christie I ever read, but this is the next in the Poirot series for me to read. However, the next one after that is Three Act Tragedy by Agatha Christie. There is a small dinner party held by Sir Charles Cartwright, once the leading star of the London stage. Unfortunately, 13 guests arrive, most unlucky, and one of them dies, and then Erky Poirot has to solve it. I think this is going to be a fun one, like dinner party, set around the dinner table, kind of locked room-esque where like how did someone around the dinner table murder someone at the dinner table. I think it's going to be really good so I'm very excited for this one. I want to make progress in at least one paro this year. <laughs> Well, two, I guess, when I read Merge on the Orient Express. But um, yeah, I want to make progress. I would also love to start uh, Miss Marple this year, but I don't own Murder at the Vicarage. Or do I? No, I don't own it. I don't think I own it. <laughs> don't think I No, I don't. Oh, I remember, um, I remember, um... So I would like to start that as well this year. So that's not an official one, but um, yes, I would like to make progress with Agatha. Then we have one I received recently. Another one that a lot of people have told me I'm gonna love is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. So Robert Jackson Bennett traditionally writes fantasy and this is a fantasy murder mystery, which I love, you guys know. I love anything that mixes genres, like particularly speculative murder mysteries I think are very interesting because they're very hard to do. From someone who's thought about writing like a fantastical murder mystery and still thinks about writing it, you have to be very strict with your parameters because we enter a murder mystery with a set of rules, or I should say clearly, the parameters of your magic system, right, of like what the fantastical element is. Because we enter a murder mystery with a set of rules that we rely upon for like, 
oh, a ghost couldn't have done it, you know? Like, there's certain, go back to the, um, if you've read Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, at the start of that, there's a list of rules that the, oh, what's the society called? This is the Murder Writers Society that the Christie was a part of. There's a set of rules that stick to a murder mystery, and fantasy murder mysteries kind of get in the way of that. They kind of don't stick to those rules. So you have to be very careful with what your magic system allows. I think you have to be very, Lee Bardugo spoke about this. I asked her a question once at a virtual event and she spoke about how for Ninth House, she had to be careful with how far the magic extended, which I think is very interesting. So in this one, in the opulent mansion at the borders of the empire, an imperial officer lies dead, killed when a tree spontaneously erupted from his body. Even here where contagions abounds and the blood of the, the and the blood of the Leviathans works strange magical changes, it's a death at once terrifying and impossible. Called in to solve the crime is Anna Dolabra. Uh, sorry, I butchered that. <laughs> Investigator whose reputation for brilliance is matched only by her eccentricity. At her side is her a new assistant, an engraver magically altered to possess a perfect memory. <gasps> I'm so excited. I think this is going to be really good. I always wanted to read Foundry Side by this author, so I'm very, very excited for this one. For if my conjectures prove true, we shall unmask a murderer, or we shall all get our throats slit. Ah! Oh, it's all the drama, Mick! I just love it! I think this is gonna be so much fun. I'm very excited. And then the last one in this list, I've been speaking for 10,000 years, dear God. The last one in this list is one I meant to read last year. It's a little one. It is The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. Oh my God, we have two Janice Hallett's on this list. I meant to read this last year. I was gonna do a video reading Christmassy murder mysteries. I'm just gonna do it this year because I didn't end up doing it last year because I got ill at the end of the year, like just before and around Christmas. So I didn't end up doing the video, but I do wanna save this to read around Christmas time because I think it's so fun to read Christmassy books around Christmas time. Be that Christmas. Christmassy romances are great as well, but there's been a lot of Christmassy um, murder mysteries. One I think I'm also going to read in that video is Murder at Holly House. I believe this is set at Christmas as well. Yeah, it is. So um, I think this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to end up reading this around then, hopefully, unless I get it again, which... <laughs> You know, who knows? This is a sequel to The Appeal by Janice Hallett, which is my least favorite Janice Hallett, but I think that's just because it was her first one. And I think it had a few debut-y elements for me. And I think those have really been worked out. I love, loved every Janice Hallett I've read since. So excited for this one. And then our final category is five-star authors. So authors I've given five stars before and another book of theirs I would like to read. First, a lot of you are gonna be happy about this one. <laughs> the first book we have is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. That's right. I'm starting my Mistborn era. I promised you guys I would do it, so I felt like I had to put this in this vlog. This is my dad's old copy. He has all of the Brandon Sanderson Mistborn books. Do I know the plot? Not really. I've just been told this is where you're gonna start by Brandon Sanderson himself. He had a video just come out as I was trying to figure out where to start, because I know Elantris is the first one, but he says don't start there. He says start with this one. I know this is, you know, he's got a magical, fantastical world that he's been built up, but I don't really wanna know. I'm just gonna go into it. I love I loved Tress of the Emerald Sea, and I know that is gonna be very different to this. I love the cozy element of Tress of the Emerald Sea. This is not gonna be cozy. <laughs> But I, Brandon Sanderson is an author that fascinates me, how he seemingly pumps out these amazing quality books very fast. So I am excited to begin Brandon Sanderson. A lot of you seem to be excited for me to do so as well. Then we have got one I'm actually gonna be reading this week, The Goodbye Cat by Hiro Arakawa. So this is by the author of The Traveling Cat Chronicles, which is one of my favorite translated books I've ever read in my entire life. Dear God, that book made me sob. This seems to be a series of seven short stories all about cats and like why we love cats. <laughs> Let's be honest, I'm probably gonna love it. Um, short stories though does make me a little bit nervous, but just, I, I, this is gonna sound so weird. I feel like out of all the cats, cat representation I've read, <laughs> Hiro Arakawa had some of the best, like, really, really knocking in on a cow a cat speaks. I put off all the stuff I had to do until today. And now, ow. I know cats don't speak, but we make our cats speak. Other people don't do this. It's very bizarre. Like one time, uh, me and my mom went around a friend's house and we went, do you make your cat speak? And they went, they me meow sometimes. Our cats have voices, they have accents, and they have inner monologues that we narrate all day, every day. Miko's like, um, hey guys, my name's Mika. <laughs> Um, I love Lux, I love going in the garden. And Lux is like, hello, my name's Lux. <laughs> How are you? I love mom. It's getting weird. Rora doesn't have one. Rora doesn't have a voice. We do narrate her thoughts, but um, she doesn't have a voice because we're too afraid of her. She'll like kill us all in our sleep if we make fun of her. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm excited for this one because I feel like Hiro Arakawa is really, really knows what cats are like. Really tapped in on the cat a thought process so I cannot wait to read this one. Next we have a very interesting one we have Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo so this is her I think adult debut we have a group of women a group of sisters or like relatives who I think all have kind of magical abilities and one of them knows the date that people are going to die I'm pretty sure she can predict the day when someone's going to die and she wants to hold her own living wake and her family will get concerned like they like no she's gonna die soon does she know she's gonna die soon but I think we're following all these women and their relationships with one another. Elizabeth Acevedo is, in my opinion, one of the best writers. I think her cadence, her way with words, is so beautiful. So, so, so beautiful. I, I, I think she's amazing. Like, obviously she writes some in verse, some not. This one is not in verse, but that, that, that cadence, that rhythm carries over in all of her books and is absolutely wonderful. So I'm very excited to read her adult debut and um, yeah, see what I think of it. Two more books on the list, everyone. We next have How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix is my horror guy. You know what I mean? He's my horror man. <laughs> That's my monkey man. I love Grady Hendrix's horror. He's probably my favorite horror author by quite a stretch. He is my flavor of horror. And this one is about some siblings whose parents die and they have to go and sell the house but some houses don't want to be sold and Louise and Marx's home has other plans for both of them. I'm very excited for this one. This one was very kindly, the US cover was very kindly gifted to me by one of my lovely patrons and Costa Rica friends, Erica, when we went to Costa Rica. Because I love the US cover of this. I love the like toy housiness of it. I've read almost, have I read all Grady Hendrix books? I think there's one or two I haven't read. I might have read all of Grady Hendrix books. I think he has, maybe has an old short one I haven't read. But other than that, I've read all this stuff and I love his stuff. I love love his stuff particularly my best friend's exorcism and southern book club's guide to saying vampires i think are probably my favorites but um yes super excited to get into this one and then finally our final book for 25 books i have to read before i turn 25 we have a book that i can't believe i have taken this long to read i got an arc of it and i think i was just really intimidated by it but we've got starling house by alex e harrow i loved the once and future witches by alex e harrow and in that that book oh my god again the writing i was like alex you're about to be one of my favorite authors it reminds me of erin morganston's style of writing a bit of Catherine arden's in the winter night trilogy style of writing like beautiful lush you know writing with a bit of weight to it you know what i mean <laughs> that's what i really love so this one again we've got another house ones our last two are house ones there's this house that everyone agrees it's best to let rot that's all i really need to know about the synopsis and there's opal who i don't really know who opal is someone who lives in the town and is like oh, i don't want to deal with that house i'm really excited for this one it seemed i'm nervous for it but like i said i love the ones of future witches so I'm very excited to get into this one so there we have it this video is probably gonna be very long <laughs> sorry about that but I just can't contain my excitement about these books that is the 25 books I want to read before I turn 25 at the end of January next year that's our deadline let me know how many of these you think I'm going to read I think I'm gonna do pretty well I didn't do well with this one last year but I'm thinking I'm feeling pretty positive about this list so let me know how many of these I think I'm going to read also let me know any favourites on the list? Any you think I should prioritise? Because I'm always open to suggestions. <laughs> and let me know which ones you most want to see me read so that I can tell you if they're good or not. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you got into the end of the video, comment a book stack emoji because I've now got to put all these books away back where they came from, which is a little bit of a daunting task. And I'll see you guys very soon in another video. Bye!